Guys, welcome back to Let's Play Dra uh, Mass Shepherd, Effect. I need to talk to you. It's important. So we got the gift data, and now we're wrong? gonna give it to Tally. You know hopefully. the data you took from those Geth control nodes. The information you uploaded to Alliance Control. I want to copy it. I understand. You want to bring this data back to the migrant fleet. Those files have information that could be vital to our efforts to understand the Geth. It could be the key to helping us reclaim our home world. Um. Then you'll leave us. If I give you this data, your pilgrimage is over. You'll go back to your own people. Not right away. I'll stay with you as long as Seven it takes ten. to stop Seren. But my people need this. To kill the Geth. You think you can use this information to destroy your enemy? Not right away. We will need to study it. It could take years. But it will give us new insight into how the Geth have changed right. and evolved over the past centuries. Go ahead. Make a copy. My people, I owe you a great debt, one I can never repay. The only thing I can offer in return is what you already have. My solemn promise to stay with you until Saren and his Geth armies are defeated. Uh, good. I never wanted anything more. Thank you, Shepard. So, actually, I'm going to talk to Tal again. And actually, uh, I'm going to cut my audio off for a little while. Hello, Shepard. You sound down. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? I find it rather peaceful. Don't worry, you'll get used to it. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know... There's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Seren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. I should go. See you later. Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm, that's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. That's tough, but you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a CSEC man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. But Saren's not going to play by our rules, c -Sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. You're a quick learner, Garrus. We'll beat him at his own game. It's the only way to stop someone like him. I'm right behind you, Commander. Oh, before I go, you said you're serving with Commander Shepard now? We saw him on the news here. He's cute. Later, sis. 
Tell me you didn't hear that. Afraid I did. Oh, shoot me now. One of my sisters. That's Sarah, the youngest. Surprised to see you here, sir. Thought you'd be chatting up, what's her name? To Sony? Liara? Why would you think that? Scuttlebutt says you got a bit of a thing for her. I could understand why. The crew's off limits with the regs against fraternization. And at least she looks like a woman. You think I'm interested in Liara because she's the only one I'm allowed to date? So you are interested in her? Of course, it could be politics. Alien diplomat's daughter, us under orders to make nice with the bug-eyed monsters. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I had to help mom raise them. What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be, able to raise kids while dad's away on a six-month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us, though. Where did you grow up? <laughs> All over. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. After helping raise them, your sisters still talk to you? Amazing. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did, Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. Sounds like that situation didn't last. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing Mom and Dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. Why didn't you tell the police? She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike would both become household names. It was a small colony. I said it was her call to make, that we should let her do it her way. Mom was pretty pissed about that. You traveled all the way home to walk your sister to school. It was only a dozen light years, like a day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk and there's blood everywhere. That's unbelievable. Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight up puncher. When he swung, she just... she wasn't there anymore, and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was gonna end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. I didn't know you liked classical literature. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? 
I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. So behave. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? You know that old saw, there's never an atheist in a foxhole? I've been in a lot of foxholes. Yeah, I guess you have. I've met a few people who were really weirded out by my faith. Because I work in space, I can't believe in a higher power. Jeez. Hello, have you people looked out the window? How can you look at this galaxy and not believe in something? I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, Skipper. So, we've got Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good? He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. So long, Rex. Shepard. Shepard? Ask all of Every Krogan is infected. Every one. We're too smart. So long. Alright, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, didn't talk through all that because I wanted to uh, just let the uh, crew talk and not my voice interrupt. I'm going to try that out, see how it works, and plus it saves me a bit of time. So that's good. So yeah, everything I said there, but we, so we learned some interesting things. Um, I support all the audio I did, and I'm sorry about what I, after I tried talking Rex again, I thought I could uh, get some more out of him, but I guess not. Alright, so actually I'm going to talk to Liara, but I'm actually going to be on the mic for this one. So, okay, let's go. And so, yeah, this is just mostly talking. I'm not sure if I mentioned that previously, but yeah. So I'm going to try to talk to everybody, not just our companions. I get the feeling you want to ask me uh, something, Commander. Tell me more about you. Maybe we could pick up where we left off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you, and making Shake a fool a of myself in the process. As I said, I am not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met, Shepard. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. 
Your kind always seems so rushed and high strung. Oh, uh, we're short lived. We don't have the luxury of time. And the Sari can live for a thousand years. We're lucky if we hit 150. That is true. At first, I thought that was a weakness of your species. After spending time with you and your crew, however, I think it may actually be an advantage. Really? You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating um, intimidating? one. intimidating? You're scared of us? Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy sees humanity as something of a bully. You run over anyone in your path to get what you want. Okay. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. Well, I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can, Liara. There is a reason the Council chose you to become a Spectre. They saw something special in you. The best of what humanity has to offer. I looked into your history. I know what you did during the Blitz. It was a remarkable display of courage and heroism. Uh, well, you could have asked. You didn't need to go behind my back. I would have told you whatever you wanted to know. I apologize, Commander. After our last conversation, I was afraid I would say something stupid again. No. I wanted to know more about That's you. That's fine, Lyra. To understand what made you into the man you are. There is something compelling Ooh. about you, Shepard. Uh, I want to believe that. Are you that. sure you're interested in me? Or is it my visions of the Protheans? I admit, your connection to the Protheans had something to do with my initial interest. But it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard. But I was not sure Damn. if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. Why not? I thought there might already be a relationship no. between you and it's, Chief it's Williams. It's not serious. No, we're not... We're not doing any of that. Williams I never and flirted I just with her. Friends. I'm Nothing just nice more. with her. My mistake, then. I am not as adept at understanding human relationships as I thought. But what about us, Shepard? Is there a mutual attraction? Damn or... straight. Was I wrong about that, too? I am attracted to you. No, you were right. There is something between us. I knew it, and I knew you felt it, too. But does this not seem rather strange? Why do I feel so close to you? We have only known each other a short time. We are from two different species. We have almost nothing That's in what makes it so hot. This makes no sense. It doesn't have to. These things never make sense. They just happen, and we get swept up in the storm. You make it sound so chaotic, so dangerous. I'll protect you. I'll keep you safe. <laughs> I am not looking for a protector. This is all a bit overwhelming. I am not used to this. You, I need some time. Um, I understand. Take all the time you need, Liara. I'll be here. Thank you, Shepard. Let's... Let's just talk about something else for now. Uh, no, it's uh, goodbye. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Let's see, we already talked to Caden a couple of videos ago, so we don't have to do that. And actually, I'm gonna do uh, one side quest, like, really quick. And then I'm gonna head to Novari. I, I still have to turn in, like, uh, two quests on the Citadel, but I was just there, like, a couple of episodes ago, so I don't really feel like going there again. Uh, let's talk to if anyone has to take some over of our Captain crew members. Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship. Uh, they're on our side. We're all on the same team here, Presley. With all due respect, sir, that's what they said about Nihilus. Look how that turned out. Um, aliens on the ship. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. Never we don't turn away help. help. Some people think asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's just being stupid and stubborn. No matter how strong you are, allies can make you stronger. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. Joker. We have actually talked to him uh, so Hey, Commander, far. next time we touch down, let's try not to park the ship in a colony of mutant zombies. Just thinking out loud <laughs> here. i like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't what? you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance All right. fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. 
All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my I disease. I didn't mean to insult you. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? No, I just oh, turned captain, I mean. Okay, I've got Vrolix syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Ew. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic. But I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. <laughs> Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. Yeah, right. I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling Sorry me Joker. Hmm. And it stuck. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. Uh, tell me about your I need disease. to know more about this Vrolik syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures, hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. I have to go. Alright, see ya. Um, alright, let's, uh, let's head out. We don't need to talk to the crew anymore, and I swear to God, my mic better not be making my voice really loud. Okie dokie, so, um... Message from Admiral Hackett, Commander. Patching it through. We just received your report. Looks like this Geth incursion was bigger than we thought. They were probably preparing for a major offensive in the system. Yeah, maybe. We're increasing patrols in the Armstrong Cluster to make sure they can't establish another foothold in the region. Nice job, Shepard. You saved a lot of human lives on this mission. Hack it out. No problem. Alright, now let's, uh, to be honest, I just, like, picked a, uh, planet at random. I guess pissed a cluster at random and just a random, uh, system. So, yeah, I just went to the Maroon Sea. Went to the Caspian. Space and... Then I just saw that we landed by a ship. And I said board it. Just because I'm hoping for to get some bit more experience. Hmm, that was quicker than normal. Alright, Liara and Rex. Yeah, confirm. Alright, so let's see what's on here. They really did a good job of making these ships very creepy. Just the music and just how small everything is. It's just. Oh, what? Oh god! Shit, let's go in the dock of. Bitches. All right. Oh god. Dumb. All clear. All right. Good job. What the? the die. Alright, 
let's see what we got here. Indeed. All right, let's see what we have here now that they're all dead. Let's go to the uh, captain's quarters. According to the log files, the ship was out near the Perseus Vale. It seems they found an alien artifact of some kind. Huh. They brought it on board, and then... This is odd, Shepard. They plotted a course straight into the Perseus Vale, as if they wanted the Geth to find them. Uh, they were brain rust. That artifact must have done something to them. Why else would someone fly into Geth's space? After that, the entries become confused, as if the captain's mind was degenerating. There is no mention of how the ship returned to human territory. The Geth turned them into husks, and left the ship where someone would find it. Trying to show us what happens to organics. Enter the video. Rex said that so goddamn dramatically. It's just, just well done. God, they did a great job with the voice actors in this game. To enter the veil. I can't do it. And I'm gonna fail here. Yep. I fucking hate the puzzles in this game. Alright, so let's just uh, clear out of here. If I can find my way through all these freaking boxes. So yeah, I'm gonna go and, uh, as I said like three times so far, I'm gonna go and head off to Novaria and uh, do that main story. And like I said, I'm trying to reach level 50. Um, I hope I can. Like, it's, it's, I'm not even sure if we're half, we're, we're probably not halfway done so far. I mean, we're halfway done, no, we're not even halfway done with the story yet, but I mean. Right now, I believe I'm level 36. So, yeah. <laughs> We really got up there. Like that bring down the sky like increased me like ten levels. It was crazy. Alright, so to Navaria. Escape from the Maroon Sea. So yeah, I try not to overhaul the uh side. Novaria. It's cold here. So you know this crime. Approach control, this is the SSV Normandy requesting a vector and a berth. Yeah, all that stuff. Normandy, your arrival was not scheduled. Our defense grid is armed and tracking you. State your business. Citadel business. We got a Council Spectre aboard. Yeah. Landing access granted. Normandy. Be advised we will be confirming identification on arrival. If confirmation cannot be established, your vessel will be impounded. What a fun bunch. I think I'll take my next leave here. <laughs> I mean, they're all asshole businessmen, so... Yeah, Novaria is pretty much just people decided to colonize like a very, very cold planet and make it a complete business operation with a lot of shady deals. And just everybody is just really paranoid and everybody like is just, you, you'll see. Th this really is not my favorite uh, main quest. I don't know why it just didn't seem like interior pressure to have that much of an impact while you were doing it. Log, the commanding officer. Because I mean, all you're going sure. after is Exo Presley a helper the of um, Saren, which is uh, Benet. You're going after Benezia in this mission. 
And until the very end, you don't really... That doesn't really seem like anything really matters. That's far enough. Hey, hey, we'll compromise. We're not here to cause problems. This is an unscheduled arrival. I need your credentials. Well, uh, the... Who are you? You first. We're the law here. Show some We're respect. We're the law. I'm Captain Michael Matsu. Oh, I am the law. Elanis Risk Control I'm with the council. I'm a specter. My name is Shepard. Load of horse crap, ma'am. We will need to confirm that. Oh, yeah? Also, I must advise you that firearms are not permitted uh, on the no. area. Sergeant Sterling, secure their weapons. No. Don't try. I'm keeping my gun. Nobody takes my weapon. Charge and lock. Oh, really? We really? are authorized to use lethal force. You I have will to the beat count of three ass. to surrender your weapon. No, you're the count of three to One, bend over and fuck two. off. Th Captain Matsuo, stand down. Right, I'm gonna cut the video off here. As always, thank you very much for watching. Tune in next one. Thanks for watching, folks. We confirmed their identity. Spectres are authorized to carry weapons here, Captain. Yeah. You may proceed, Thanks for Spectre. watching, folks. I hope the rest of your visit will be less confrontational. Parasini-san will meet you upstairs.